When you first start planning with Agile, you're typically just planning for individual teams for specific iterations. But the next step is to put that iteration-based planning in the context of a release or a program increment. And the team planning page, available from the plan menu, lets you take that first step by planning all of the iterations in a release for a given team. If you're only planning for a single team, this might be the only tool that you need. If you are planning for larger, more complex releases with multiple teams contributing, you can still use team planning in conjunction with your capacity plan to schedule the planned work into iterations at the team level. Before we jump into this page, though, there are a couple of things to be aware of. The first is that before you can use the team planning page, you must use the time boxes page to define the time range and other details for each of your iterations or sprints and the release that you want to plan. And you have to be a project administrator or higher with the time box admin permission enabled to create these time boxes. That's also true for some of the features in the team planning page itself, where you have to be a project administrator to add or change a team's velocity. You also want to have at least placeholder stories in your backlog for the work that you want to plan. And of course, you can always add the stories that you need as your planning progresses. But once you have your time boxes created and at least some preliminary stories defined, you can select the release that you want to plan. The team planning page has three views available for reviewing and planning your work. Each view is useful and is designed to be used at different stages in your planning process. So let's start by looking at our backlog and ensuring that we have a prioritized list of work that's ready to be scheduled. The backlog view shows you all the work items that can be scheduled into an iteration and that also fit the filtering criteria that's specified on the page. And there are some filter presets already defined for you that make it easy to look at different types of work. For example, to schedule work items into an iteration, those items need to be assigned to the appropriate release. And I can choose Release Backlog to see the items that have already been assigned to the release. Or I can select unscheduled or unfinished work to see what other work needs to be considered. And I can also choose to just look at stories or defects and so on. If you need to, you can narrow your list of work even more by selecting show filters and creating additional filters. I'm gonna go ahead and tag each of these items for the release that we're planning, which will move them from this list and into our release backlog. Next up, you want to review and prioritize your list of items, and you want to ensure that each work item has a plan estimate. To rank your list, you can simply drag and drop the work items into the appropriate order, and you can enter your estimates in line in this list. Your initial estimates for each work item will be an essential part of the discussion and decision-making process to determine what will fit into an iteration and into the release as we compare those estimates to the available capacity of the team. Another factor in scheduling your work is the dependencies between work items. For example, you should identify any work items that can't be started until other work items are complete. This is going to determine the order in which these items are sequenced in your iterations. And you can do this directly in the tool by selecting the ID of a work item to open the detail editor and then select the Dependencies tab to identify whether this item is a predecessor or successor to another item. When you've gone through all this and have enough work for the iterations that you want to plan, you're ready for the next step in the process, and for that we're going to move to the Planning view. Now, our backlog is still visible on the left, but we can also see each iteration in our release on the right. You can see the iteration name, the duration, any issues that are flagged, the plan velocity, and the percentage of velocity that has been scheduled for the iteration. The release backlog contains all the work items that we've assigned to a release, but not to an iteration. The release backlog is also available at the bottom of the right pane in case you need to change your filtering options in the left pane. And one of the big advantages of the team planning page is that you can look at the plan estimates of the work that needs to be completed and compare that to the team's actual capacity or planned velocity. So how do you determine a team's velocity? Well, you can have a discussion with the team to decide how much velocity they will commit to for each iteration, and that should take into consideration holidays, 
time off, events, all-day meetings, and any commitments outside of their work delivery. But if the team has been working in Rally for some time, you can also look at the team's historical velocity and throughput to get a much better sense of how much work they've been able to accomplish in similar time periods in the past. You can do this by looking at pages like the Iteration Status page to see how much work the team has completed in past iterations. There are also several reports available that can help provide this information, such as release burnup or velocity. But one of the easiest ways to get to this information is through a relatively new chart on the team board. Unfortunately, the team we're looking at in this video doesn't have enough data yet for this tool to be that useful. So I'm going to switch over to a different team for a minute to show you how this works. From the team board, if I select charts and capacity forecast, I can see the team's velocity, which is based on story points, and their throughput, which is based on story counts, for the past year. I can specify a forecast period that is similar to my current release and a few other criteria to get back suggested capacity for this team and associated confidence levels. Now I'm not going to go into more detail around this tool here or show you exactly how it works, but know that there is detailed information available from the help icon on this page that will walk you through using this very helpful tool. Meanwhile, back in our team planning page, let's assume that we settled on a committed velocity for each iteration of 30 story points. Now notice the warning that's showing up in our issues column. If I hover over the warning icon, I can see that the issue is that we haven't defined the velocity for this team. So let's fix that. And remember that you do have to be at least a project administrator to enter or change this velocity. And although the team agreed to 30 points per iteration, they also have a couple of team members on vacation during iteration 3. So we're going to adjust the team's capacity to 20 to reflect that. So at this point, we've defined, prioritized, and estimated all of the items in our release backlog. We've also assessed the team's historical velocity to arrive at their committed velocity for each iteration in the release. Now we're ready to plan our release and begin scheduling our work into iterations. To make it easier to see, I'm going to expand each iteration. To schedule a work item, just drag it from the backlog into the appropriate iteration. If you're not a fan of drag and drop, you can select the gear icon next to the unscheduled work item and move it that way. As you schedule each work item, check to make sure you're not exceeding the velocity that your team agreed to for the iteration. As you add work items, the percentage of planned velocity is automatically updated. If you schedule too much work into an iteration, the name and velocity percentage turn red. And there's also going to be a new alert in the issues column. Now it's always best to schedule work below 100% of your planned velocity to account for scope growth. If you end up with too much work in an iteration, you can select the X next to the work item to return it to the release backlog, or you can use the gear menu to assign it to a later iteration, return it to the release backlog, or remove it from the plan altogether by unscheduling the release and the iteration. Or you can just drag the work item to another iteration. As you review your plan, it's important to consider dependencies. You might need to change the scheduling of a work item to a later iteration if another work item needs to be finished first. Select the number in the dependencies column for details about defined dependencies for that item. Because this work item has a predecessor that's scheduled for the same iteration, it might make sense to move this one down. Also, some teams like to create and manage tasks as part of the iteration planning process. You can view, add, or change tasks from any of the team planning page views. Click the Tasks icon or the blank box in the Task column to open the Task dialog where you can add, re-rank, change, or delete any tasks associated with the work item. And select the X to close this window and return to the team planning page. Now through the magic of time lapse, our plan is looking pretty good and we have completed our initial planning process. Now we can look at the final view of the team planning page, the plan view. This view provides your team members and stakeholders a summary view of the release and what was planned. This view focuses on the right panel of the planning view and presents all the work items that are scheduled in each iteration, along with the velocity information. You can also see what remains in the release backlog, 
that is, the work that was considered for the release, but didn't fit within the planned velocity for the release. In this case, we were able to plan all but one story. And it's a good idea to leave this work in the release backlog and in prioritized order for now. That way, if the team does finish some of the work more quickly than expected, there is additional work available to be pulled into an iteration. And now you understand how to create a release plan with your team and schedule work into iterations by using the team planning page. To learn more about Rally and Agile practices, check out our blog and community. Like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you'll never miss new content as it's added.